there she is. She's by the window. Hi, Sophie. No, I'm not going to pick you up again. Don't worry. Huh. Anyway, hi. It's Wander Song. I have been taking my time finishing up dinner and getting stabbed by my cat's claws, which are not the same as a kitchen katana. <laughs> um, oh, man. This is my favorite thing in this game. I think I should just get all of my friends who sing and have them sing this. And then I could get John Robert, who's the uh, voice of the bard, to sing too. I bet he'd do that. Yes, Miriam is not participating. Did I get stuck? No. Okay, so we want the mermaids. Yeah, so last time we hung out with some pirates and then we then we had to go questing after the mermaids. We drank coffee We've discovered that the bard probably shouldn't have coffee because it makes them extremely, <laughs> extremely, <sighs> it's just a little, they, they become a little much for everybody. So, um, so no coffee for the bard, which is fine. I should probably not be drinking coffee, which I generally don't. I started drinking black tea. I'll have chai sometimes in the mornings, um, which hasn't made me freak out. So that's good, <laughs> but I don't have it that often. Um, but yeah, then we, we, we went, we, we had toxic masculinity that we had to talk down from being bad. And then he was less bad. He was at least self-aware toxic masculinity, which is like the first step to overcoming toxic masculinity. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, we went looking for mermaids because we got to find the mermaids. Sophie, no, you aren't going to go out there. I'm going to let my cat out and she's going to get mad, but I'm not going to let her back in. Sophie, what do you want? What is it, baby? She's sneezing. Kitty sneezes. Anyway, we're going to go... Yar, 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 That's how that's happening. Oh no, why are you scared, friend? Oh, he's excited. Oh, he's so excited. I mean, he wants to save the mermaids, but he's also excited to see them. Oh no, does he have a mermaid girlfriend? Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Yes, I am going as slowly as possible. <laughs> oh my god, that is literally somebody going la 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 la, right? Yeah. I'm trying to inspire him. To be brave. Did he get stuck? Oh my gosh. The captain is having some trouble. Oh.
So you know the um the Twitter account, the VG Advisor account that just says like good advice from video games? I feel like we should just screenshot this right here. Like this is life advice right here. Retro Bun, thank you for hosting. Um Yeah, no, I, I do I do very much enjoy uh No, Nick, we got started late, so you did not miss much. I feel like people need to take this to heart. Like and this is this is like one of those things. I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna keep doing it anyway. Um, so when you have this like feeling, like this expectation on yourself that things have to be perfect, that you have to do the right thing and get the right answer, then it's like if you don't achieve like perfect. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, Nick, for subscribing. Cause that that's that's three years. Right? That's three years. That's a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Sophie has things to say. Sophie! Um, but yeah, oh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yes. So, like, you have this idea in your head that you're like, I have to do this perfectly. Um, I have to get the right answer. It has to turn out well. They have to like it. It has to be ideal or or it, or it's unacceptable and the idea of like being able to make a mistake and that being okay that's really hard to to like come to terms with right like right i'm not the only one that like struggles with this i know i'm not um but the idea of it being okay that that, that things like things are going to be bad for a bit. That's fine. Somebody's going to get mad at you. That's fine. Somebody's going to be disappointed in you. That's fine. It's okay. It'll suck for a bit and then it'll be okay. Like the world isn't actually going to end even if there are consequences for something. And I don't know where we get it in our heads that, that it's not going to be okay. Like anytime we make a mistake, anytime we say or do something wrong, like... It's like, it's like you get in trouble at school and then you want to just hide under your desk and never be seen again instead of being able to accept that you either you did something wrong or there was a misunderstanding or bad luck. But regardless, something was bad. Now it sucks, but it's going to be okay. So this is, this is something I think we all need to take to heart. I do. But I've been working on it and I'm at least aware of it. And as we've discussed with our toxic masculinity friend, self-awareness is the first step to overcoming your problems. You then have to follow that up with other steps. Should you not? Oh no. The bard is so like, I love the bard's intense face. No, captain, you're fine. It's okay. Oh, I love the bard. The bard is very cute. <laughs> the mermaids look like they're just chilling. Oh dear. Oh my gosh, is he going to confess his love? You don't get to make that decision, Captain. And you don't know. I was like, he be like, is he going to propose? I was like, no, he's going to confess his love. There's no way he would propose to the mermaid that rescued him once. That's, that's a little, uh, that's a little intense. Mel. 
Oh no. Oh no. His heart. Ah, okay. So it's not that the mermaids are scared of monsters. It's that they, uh... Don't want to have to deal with obsessive stalker humans. Yeah. Social pressure, the real monster. Yeah, the bard is here on an adventure. They're like, hmm, that does not sound like what usually happens. Yeah, they're like, that's not bad. Uh oh. The apostrophe is in the wrong place. Uh... My bandmate Danger has his fingers tattooed with a swear word on one hand and y'all on the other. Um, I can't say it because I don't swear on my stream. And when we perform at child-friendly events, it transforms into rock y'all. <laughs> If that tells you what it is. We use a little bit of Sharpie on his fingers. Um, but he has he has the correct placement of the apostrophe because that's very important. I checked. I mean, I guess mermaids don't have to follow the rules of human grammar, but I don't know. Like, it just it serves a purpose. <laughs> it's between his fingers like on the knuckles like between the index finger and the middle finger because he's got the letters tattooed here but it's like up there so, which is important you can't not have an apostrophe because it's a it's a contraction everyone misses you <laughs> They're so sparkly. <laughs> It'd be yell wool. Yeah, physically on his hands. No, his he has finger tattoos on his hands. Hi, Captain Lucas. Oh. The bard looks sad. Do you hear the little voice? They're too sad to sing with their full voice. Oh, Hello. Hello. Everyone is sad. All right. <laughs> oh my God, that's adorable. That's really, that's really cute. I'm sorry, that's really, really cute. Oh yeah, no, the wrong one is absolutely more popular, but it's not grammatically correct. So then we can get into prescriptivism versus descriptivism and rules and grammar, but that's a whole conversation. <clears throat> All right. And I have to learn a song to save the world. I did my best. Oh, 
Oh no! Where did you run off to, Captain? Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> she gonna go on a date with him? Aww. I don't know if that's gonna like... I don't know if it's gonna work that way, you know? They're so sparkly. I don't know why I get Majipsy vibes from them, but I kinda do. The, uh, the magical people from Mother 3. Which are a complicated set of characters when it comes to potentially localizing that. Especially as awareness of that as being connected to a slur against the aroma people. Um... There's complicated layers of complication. <clears throat> but they're cool in the game. Miriam, what's up? Oh, the captain. Oh, no. Miriam, are you going to have something that's not a... Uh... you going to have something to say that's not kind? <sighs> okay, nope. Just something very juvenile. That's all right, Miriam. Because it's totally, totally totally reasonable to not be interested in falling in love. Aromantic folks are valid. Um, but it seems pretty dumb. That's where the, um, the juvenile attitude comes in. Yep. Fired run. <gasps> oh, look at the captain! Oh, he looks so sad! I'm gonna try to go back here. Just in case. Okay, nope. They do not appear like they want to uh, talk to me or the captain. So we're just going to have a sad... We're just going to have a sad captain. That is sad. I like the captain. But he, he did have unrealistic expectations. Oh my gosh. I forgot that the fish just jump up every time you sing. It's very Disney princessy. Bard, are you a Disney princess? I think I think they are. Ah. Lost waterfall, that's where we're going. I clearly, I don't know the song well enough. L Link is too young to drink and I don't drink. What is that quote talking about? Ah, the milk bar. Got it. All right, Miriam. Queen, Queen Chaos is Nexus Point. <laughs> Miriam doesn't have fun. <laughs> uh. Miriam! 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 
I just want to talk to you. Ah. Uh. Blue! Hello! You don't look happy. Oh. Oh. Oh no. That's kind of a scary. Oh no! You hurt his feelings! Oh. That's really cute. Yeah, well, Miriam clearly has some, uh, discomfort about belonging or not. I'm not exactly sure what her deal is, um, because she doesn't want to uh, let us find out. She is very prickly and therefore exactly the sort of person I would have been close friends with in high school. <laughs> I would acquire very prickly people as close friends. Problem with making friends with people who are like porcupines as far as like the prickly, uh, pricky, prickly spikes and squishy middle is that you wind up getting pricked a lot by them. So it's not necessarily good for you. Oh, friendship! Oh, do you like me or am I still a huge nuisance? Yep. That's kind of where I figured. Oh. Strange, silly thing. Yeah. They are pretty silly. Oh, buddy, no! Oh. Francisco. Okay. Penny. <laughs> A very charming Fenny. Oh, they're friend pirates. They're definitely not violence pirates, which is good. Like, I prefer friend pirates to violence pirates. Yay, I made friends. Friends. Ah. I'm not always sure what I can walk on or not. Hello, tiny Nina. You're teeny. You have the little, like, fairies from Majora's Mask kissy face thing going on. Man. Oh, look at how adorable, Nina. I could just, like, pick you up and put you on my shoulder and carry you on adventures. I wonder, blue glass. I didn't. I. I. I will never know. Oh, I will. <laughs> ha! Good luck on your cool adventure, indeed. Lucas, it's okay, Captain. Yar. That's the saddest yar anyone has ever said. No, Captain! Oh. What does that mean? <laughs> Yar. Oh, we got some happy yars. Huh, yes, she did think you were cute. All right. Oh, <gasps> hug! Oh my God, that was precious. Oh dear. That was really cute. I will say, um, it is very important to respect somebody's wishes and consent when it comes to whether you're interested in them or not. If they are not interested in you, the right course of action is to 
step back. Um, as much as, sorry, we're getting real. It was a very cute moment, but I do really want to say, I think it's super important um, to respect somebody's wishes. Um, we have a lot of like romantic comedies and entertainment that's like this person said no, but then this other person just like, okay, let's be real. The woman says no, the man keeps trying and trying and trying and eventually wins her over and it turns out that they are destined to be happy ever after. Um, don't do that in real life. Um, it's, and it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really, it makes me a little uncomfortable when I see things like that in, uh, in stories just because I've had, um, I've had that. Um, a lot of people have, and I've seen it with friends, and she's not good. Um, so the captain's heart is pure in that he doesn't mean to hurt anybody, but if the mermaid says, I'm done with this, actually, you can't respect my boundaries because the mermaid has expressed her boundaries here. And we'll talk about the hug, but this is really important to me. The mermaid has said, okay, I guess he can come. Only he can come for hanging out. Um, I don't know that I believe that he's actually going to follow that. If he doesn't, then she can kick him out and never see him again. And that will be entirely justified. And I don't care how sad he is. Um, her boundaries are more important than his sadness. Um, so I would have actually, as much as I was sad for him that he was sad, um, I wasn't like, well, I hope that she decides to welcome him anyway. Like, no. She gets to decide she doesn't want some random dude she doesn't know proposing marriage. <laughs> um, but I do think that the, he is he is a very cute person interacting with everyone else. So I will forgive this game and this character for kind of skirting my comfort levels with that. Um, because it kind of bugs me, which is why instead of talking about the cute moment, I'm talking about how you should respect people's boundaries and consent. Um, there's a... Yeah, he'll be fine if he ends up rejected again in the end. And it's not her responsibility to make it be okay. Uh, but God, is it hard as the person who has to break somebody's like not even break someone's heart but like let someone down it is hard when you've been socialized your whole life to uh to put somebody else's feelings and needs above your own so you feel like you can't express your boundaries or your comfort because it might make someone else sad and then you wind up in a situation you don't want to be in I'm sorry I am going places that are not where Wander Song wants me to go right now I just I've, this is a, this is a really uncomfortable, uh, moment. <laughs> it's a very, very cute hug and I'm, I'm sorry because I love the pirates. They're really adorable. I even like the captain. I've enjoyed getting to see them all, but I'm, I'm stuck on, I'm stuck on this. Yeah, it's just it's hard for me to laugh about that. Like, har, 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 the man doesn't, isn't going to listen to the woman's boundaries. That's so funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a very, very cute game. I'm probably gonna like it, uh, the rest of it. That's not funny. That's not cool. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that they put that in, in this game. I think is what I'm saying here. I'm actually really uncomfortable with that. But I will continue playing the game. I feel better being able to say that. To say that, and it's interesting because this is a game that is clearly very like progressive and inclusive. You know, the main character is non-binary and there have been other non-binary folks in the game. They've shown queer folks in various ways um, and been very, um, I assume it's Trellis Hugo, but I might be wrong. <laughs> um, uh, but I think this goes to show that even people who are good, wonderful, kind, loving, 
sensitive people um, can have a really huge blind spot. Like the hilarity of a man disregarding a woman's boundaries. Because if the bard had said, no, dude, that's not cool, instead of thinking, that's not what she wants, then I would be like, oh, okay, this is kind of like being established that it's not cool, but it's still played for laughs. It's not funny. I don't, I'm not laughing. I don't think it, I don't think that joke belongs in this game. I'm going to continue the game though. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a really bad idea. I would say that this is just a case of being a product of the society in which you live. I love that I can like, I can go fast or I can go very, very, well, relatively slowly. <laughs> Do I call you Ube Quill or Ube Quill? I realize I don't always know how to pronounce things, but I will try. Oh, hold on. Yes, look at this. Look at this now. Yeah. Slippy ground. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I assumed it was Ube, but then I realized it might not be. So if it's not Ube, feel free to correct me and I will do my best. Aha, okay. Yeah, well, like it makes it it makes sense in the character. I just I feel like that like that that was supposed to be a comedic parting note, which it was not for me. Um, but okay. Do I sing? Here we go. Okay, I figured it out eventually. I have literally no idea how the rhythm of this is supposed to work. Like, I can, some of it is like rhythmic and I can follow it. Well, that's some interesting sound effects. We're under the water. Oh, it got really loud. I am in the water. Yes! Yes! Okay, anyway, I should probably stop. Coral kind of looks like cacti, doesn't it? The music... Hold on. The music's getting creepy. Oops. So you get you can get a bunch of different dances. And the... Oh, I'm not good at this. The dance that I like best is, is that a pirouette? No! Oh no! No, is this requiring me to think about physics? I can't do that! Hoop. Hoop. Deep. Curse you, gravity. Eep. This is going to take a while. Something is definitely not right here. 
The music kind of makes me think of uh, Terraria. It's like all glitchy and not. <laughs> what was that? Well, let's figure it out. Ah. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so that's the introduction of that mechanic. Are you ready for me to struggle with it? Oh no, timing! So you have to figure out... Having a dance party, me and the blob. <sighs> anyway, oops, that wasn't good. Oh, oh, hello. This must be our little companion friend. No. I love your your voice, fish friend. Ah, I have played a game. Much more handy than the average fish. Well, the average fish doesn't have hands. Ha! Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! I actually don't know where I'm going. But I'm gonna go this way just in case. No, I don't get to go this way, okay. There we go. That looks important. Ha, look at that! I mean, I could just climb over it, but I can't because I'm the bard. Okay, well, I didn't because I was too busy thinking about other things. Wait, where'd you go? Get back here. Hello? Oh, Chaos Fairy. Yeah, they are fairies. <laughs> like, like, excuse me, what are you doing here? <laughs> Queen Chaos, her little helper. They've all been, yeah, exactly. That's right, Bard. Hmm. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. There 
we go. Oh, shoot. Oops. Not again. I'm having some trouble, folks. Hold on. Sorry. Eek. All right, Bard. I'm sorry. I'm going to send you... Hold on, no, I can, I can do this, I can do this. Okay, hold on. to groove to this music it does kind of have that like sounds like terraria i swear so why is chaos the water oops i suppose that's true go that looks like a good one okay Beep. all right oh that's exciting that's cool hello chaos fairy glug glug oh my god I love the little sound effect voices Because it's not the exact same glug over and over again. It's like a custom glug for each line inside of the end times. Oh! <laughs> that does sound bad. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Oh. That wasn't the right way. Um, I don't know what the right way is. Ah, there we go. Oop. I love how the fish lake only sort of seems to be paying attention. Okay, hold on. Huh. can't do it. Okay. So if I, ju I need to jump with the button and not the up because I'm not good at directional things. So like I don't hit it high hard. I don't I don't do all the way with it. Eek. Yes, I got it. But yeah, you jump. It's easier to, to jump all the way when you just press a button because then it's like basically either you jump or you don't jump. There we go. Hmm. I bet I'm going to want to go down there, huh? Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Yes! Figured it out. All right, jump! Okay, we had one of these blobbies before. There we go, yes. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do over here. up there. Okay, hold on. All right. Aha! I'm up. Yeah. No! So you just like sing a note until you get the one that you want. Goodness. It's glooping all over the place. I thought they were supposed to stop glooping. Oops. Huh? Great. Game mechanics. No! No, but I can't jump all the way! Yeah, that one is just gonna gloop! That's not very nice! I can do this. I can do this. So I think the answer here is gonna be this. And then, oh, no, no. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. Okay. No. This one, no, no, we want it to be up high. I'm gonna do this and then, nope, that was wrong. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, hold on. Up, up. Okay. And then we're gonna do this. Eek! Yes! No! <sighs> I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Did it wrong. Platforming is hard. Flutie Bot has a cooldown on on her on her quotes. So if you if you if she just quoted and you want another quote, give give her like a couple of seconds and then try again. All right. All right. So what am I gonna? How on earth? Deep. Okay. There we go. No! Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah, this is some serious platforming for me. There 
we go. No! It just, it's a little bit surprising because the game has previously not been like platformy challenging, you know? Oops. At least we can groove to some good music. I do like this track a lot. Yes! Okay. Oh no! Okay, well. Victory is only so victorious. Because I don't have- Oh, there's a fish! There's a fish! Fish, fish! Fish, fish! Oops. I got too excited. <laughs> I overshot. Gloop, 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 gloop. Gloop, gloop, gloop. Hmm. So, this makes it sound like perhaps it would be good to reset the world. Because the world is having some problems. What do you do then? How do you solve this problem? How does... Oops! Got a little overzealous there. But if it's best for the, for the rest of the universe... Oops, oh. I was- I had it, I had it. No! Like, do you get to tell the rest of the universe that, um... That they have to deal with... Oops! Okay, magenta, and then we release, and then we go here, and then we magenta again? No? No! Because, like, humans have a tendency to- oh, oh, I see, okay. Humans have a tendency to feel like we are the, uh, the most important things in the universe, but that doesn't necessarily mean we are. And I find that conflict interesting. There we go. No, 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 no. No, no, no. This one. No. No, no. Okay. <laughs> it's a little strange because so much in the game is so forgiving, but then this platforming is hard. But that's a, that's a question that stories ask sometimes, is like, if it came down to the fate of the world, the entire world, or one person you love, what decision would you make? And what's the right decision, you know? And like, that's actually, I think, a really interesting question. 
And I think everybody has their own answer to that, but like... There we go. Yes. No, I mean like literally if 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 it came down between the human race and one person you loved, what choice would you make? And if not like what um and I'm not saying that there's an easy answer, but I, I, I think that that's, that's an interesting question. And one of the things that's really interesting about games and stories is that they let us ask those questions. I mean, obviously, Blank Splat, Blank Splat, the, 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 the only answer is not to play. Obviously, the, the thing is to, uh, is to just have everything be... Like, oh, well, I just wouldn't be in the bad situation. <laughs> Obviously, that's the answer we would like. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a good question. The thing is that's, that I find interesting, for example, Shadow of the Colossus, and I, to be careful because some people might not have played it. Um, ooh, if I get my PS4 back, I could play The Last Guardian finally. Um, but like games have like you know stories where like one person sacrifices themselves to save the world um and i don't think that it's easy to say what you would do if you've never been in that situation you don't i don't think you know what you would do but i do think that it is good for us to um I think it is I think it's kind of good to have exercises like this to 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 play with them in the safe world of fiction where there's no actual consequences to think about what is that like and maybe it will help us have a better understanding kind of of some of the difficult choices because people make difficult choices every day that's the thing people have to decide between doing like what's right according to one way and what's right according to another way like and to put this, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with Wander Song, but on the subject of, of empathy and making tough choices, um, one of the things that's really difficult when it comes to people breaking laws is that if you if you think if you just think a person is bad, so they do bad, and then I punish them to make them not do bad anymore and to make other people not want to do bad, well, that actually doesn't solve the problem. Because what it really is most of the time is there's a reason why people commit crimes. There's a reason why people break laws. Um, and if you actually want to change the world and prevent people from breaking laws, the thing to do is not to just punish them harder. It's to ask. Why did they do this? And a lot of times it's because they're making a difficult choice. And a lot of people have to have to make difficult choices, whether that's, um, you know, to pull from from fiction, um, you know, Jean Valjean as a young man stealing a loaf of bread to feed, feed his sister's family and winding up in, in jail for the rest of his life. Um, or, or, you know, like, so, so you wind up with people who, who are, who are, who are desperate in various ways. Maybe they, they don't have the resources to get by and they see resources and society tells them it is wrong to take resources that aren't yours. Um, but do you let your child go without food because it is morally wrong to take things that aren't yours? Or do you say, even though taking things from other people is what I'm told is wrong, my child needs food. So I will take things that are not mine from somebody else so that my child can eat. Um, and I think it's really essential to start thinking about um, why people do things and to have compassion and understanding and empathy if somebody does something that seems destructive or immoral sometimes you know sometimes it is that a person is is like giving into like hatred or anger or whatever um 
but a lot of times there's a reason why. Um, it's like when you have people getting involved with, um, you know, gangs or terrorist organizations both have something in common that people have a lack of opportunities a lot of times. They're not provided with opportunities or resources or a future. Um, and in comes a group that says, you can belong, we'll take care of you, we'll take care of your people, we'll stop the people who are hurting you and keep you safe and protected from an enemy and you'll be strong and taken care of. Um, and if you don't have that, the, yeah, and it's also why people join, join cults. Like basically people, like nobody like, up, like, maybe there are people, but most people aren't like, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hurt people. That sounds great. I would love to do that. No, people, they'll like rationalize the behavior. They'll rationalize what they do. Well, it doesn't matter because that person doesn't need it as much as I do. Um, but uh, it's like the whole thing of like, you know, shoplifting, who gets hurt by that? Um, and it gets really complicated. Um, there is very little that is morally black and white in the world. There's a lot of shades of gray. Um, and you have people who, and I think that this is, I think that, I think that as people, um, boy, we are off top topic here. I hope you guys are all right with this. I guess if you've seen me stream before, I even told myself before the stream started, I was like, no, Lauren, we're going to actually play the game and focus on what's in the game. We're not just going to stop for 20 minutes and talk about something else um yeah well and then people will people will take from other people and they'll rationalize it and be like well I need the money more than they do and 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 like you know we can look and say here is a person whose child is without food and they are taking from a giant corporation that isn't going to notice that so really what's the harm um but it gets more complicated when you start look like humanizing both sides when there is a human face to both sides like if you take that food from that store is that going to affect the person who works at that store like what are the repercussions going to be um and how do we weigh one person's needs against another person's needs and it's 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 there's no easy answer yeah apparently we've done that blue glass i guess so I, I do feel like when people get it, and there have been some studies and research that have kind of indicated this, but when people hit a certain point with money and power, they kind of lose some of their empathy because they, they honestly, my guess, and this is probably completely incorrect, is that um, you have to rationalize your situation and... Uh, on some level, being like a dragon hoarding wealth, you have to be able to rationalize that to make it okay in your head. So clearly other people, you deserve it and other people don't deserve it. And you convince yourself of this story in order to be able to continue existing the way you are. Um, yeah, well, the thing is like Blink, Blink said, it, 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 is, it is hard because you, you can say that about a billion dollar corporation, but if there's, you know, if there's shrinkage on the employee's watch, is that employee going to get let go? Um, in, an, in, an, in an ideal world, no, because it's not their fault and that's ridiculous. But in an ideal world, the person's child wouldn't be hungry for them to want to take the thing that isn't theirs to be able to feed their child in the first place. Um, so, like, people are like... You know, if we took care of people and took care of their basic needs, um, then they would be lazy and not do anything. I'm like, or you would see a major drop in crime <laughs> if people didn't have to, if people had enough food, didn't have to worry about where they were going to be eating. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, like, so I took, I take a look at the example of my dad, who is, who is quite well off. And he started off, he, he grew up in the projects in Brooklyn. So he's one of those, those rags to riches type stories. Um, and he believes that he did it himself and he worked hard. Yes. And he was also given opportunities and chances and had luck, um, and had certain things in his favor. So he put forth effort and other people made it possibly, um, but he, uh, he tends to look at the worth of people with like a dollar sign, which is very uncomfortable for me. <laughs> um, 
to have conversations with him because suffice to say I think we have very different sets of morals and values and things. And I love my dad very much, but this is something that I just I do not know how to get my head around. Um uh yeah. So just it just becomes this big complicated thing. But yeah, like it would be really nice if people didn't have to worry about these things. I have yeah, well, my dad was poor, and now he's not, and he has forgotten what it was like um, because he's put that out of his mind and is convinced that he worked very hard to get where he is, and anyone who isn't where he is must be failing due to some personal fault of their own. Um, so I personally think that there's no reason why anyone... If there's no real reason why anybody should have to suffer in certain ways that we could very easily remedy, maybe we should just remedy those. You know, we can't just snap our fingers and be like, oh, there's no cancer. Um, but we could put policies in place that protect people, feed people, help people not, not die in preventable ways and not suffer in preventable ways. And so it is somewhat maddening to me that people are like, no, that's preventable suffering is justified because those people don't deserve to not suffer. Anyway, hi, <laughs> I have politics. Oh man, that was a tangent. Are you here to complete the ritual? I don't know what the ritual is. Question mark. Is it good? Yeah, there we go. That's the spirit bard. I appreciate that the bard doesn't, uh, they don't, like, tiptoe around. Like, they say what they feel. They say what they mean. Yeah, well, so, the thing about people, like, the billionaires, is that they, as far as I can tell, kind of cease to being... They cease to be like humans and become dragons. Dragons identify themselves by their hoard of gold that does them no good, but they collect it and they own it. And it, the owning of it is what matters. Um, like when I, when I saw them be compared to dragons for the first time, I was like, oh, that's perfect. That is absolutely what it is. Um, <clears throat> and there's a, there's a reason why people slay dragons. <laughs> Because they're tired of them raising the countryside, eating, eating the young, and, uh, and, and stealing and murdering. So, yeah. Just some food for thought. Meanwhile, Bard over here has no idea about any of this. I mean, Control-C, just look at the incarceration system in the U.S. It literally is slavery. It is the way that slavery is still legally permitted. When they outlawed slavery, they left one clause that was if people are imprisoned for being bad, then you can do this to them still. So they do. And if that's something that you don't know about, there's a lot to read and a lot to learn. Um, I was not really aware of it up until just a few years ago. Um, and I've been trying to learn more about it over the years. Um, but there's a lot of conversation that's been having about that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, in the Earth song. I wonder what the ritual is going to be. Yep, that's right, Blink Spat. Hello, Chaos Fairy. She can be slippery and weird. Her rules will be arbitrary and hard to follow. Okay, so Trellis, my... My response to that is that I will judge people based on their actions. I don't know what's going on in their head. I only know what they do. And so based on their actions, I will call billionaires dragons who hoard wealth and do not care about the well-being of others and are more interested in accumulating 
something intangible of no direct benefit to them solely because they want to see the number get bigger and not because they need it for any way or are doing anything with it besides sitting on it and watching the number get bigger while other people suffer and starve and are in like completely preventable helpful or like like helpable situations like i'm gonna judge those people for that action that is an action that they're doing um it's like if somebody goes around kicking puppies maybe they're not a bad person maybe they don't mean any harm but they are kicking puppies and i'm going to acknowledge that they are kicking puppies and want them to stop kicking puppies and think that their continuation of puppy kicking behavior is a problem um so that's that's my that's my my thing here like if if somebody were like literally setting people on fire i would judge them if someone is punishing or harming or owning other people i will judge them on those actions so yeah like people i mean i'm sure that's if we're gonna like go to like an extreme direction, I'm pretty sure that serial killers have some justification for why what they're doing is okay. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> Within their own heads, I'm sure they make it okay. That doesn't make it okay. So, you know, working people in sweatshops, slave-like conditions, they can tell themselves it's fine. That doesn't make it okay. So. I don't know. I don't know that a billionaire would... Because if a billionaire was like, oh, there's so much to do and I can't do anything about it, like, they could at least try to do something <laughs> instead of actively... Like, Amazon would be plenty profitable if he paid his employees a livable salary. Walmart would be plenty profitable profitable if they paid their employees enough that they didn't have to be dependent on food stamps. And yet they don't because they want their numbers to be bigger. How is that not a crime against humanity that needs to be stopped? Yeah. And all this going back to the question of like is it well like okay so one of the things that i talk about a lot on my stream because it keeps coming up in various games that we play is that i don't think monsters are born monsters i think that people are made into monstrous people by what happens to them in life so most abusers were abused and so they are trying to control the situation that they find themselves in um they, they are exerting the power that they have to make themselves feel safe. And it comes from a place of pain and a place of fear. And I understand that. And my heart goes out to the sad, broken child inside of them. But they also need to stop hurting people. You know? You can simultaneously understand why someone is the way they are and demand that they stop their hurtful actions. So, yeah. When I say this, I don't mean the people who have become billionaires are inherently evil, flawed, you know, like that their souls are tarnished or anything like that. I think they're just people. But I think through circumstances and their own natures, they have done great evil to other people and continue to do so in a lot of cases. And I don't know whether I would be any better if I were in that situation. I don't know. I would like for a world not to let me be in that situation, you know? Like, I think it would be amazing if we were able to recognize abuse when it's happening to children and step in and, and, and interrupt that and break that cycle so that those kids don't grow up to become abusers. I would love for the world to be able to prevent people from doing bad things by preventing the desire and taking away the power to do bad things. <laughs> so, back to the game. What do I think about the overseers? I don't know. It's honestly... 
they're all clearly unraveling. Like it is blatantly apparent looking at the state of the world and the overseers, which is a very, very strange word choice. Um, like I really don't know what they were thinking choosing the word overseer. <laughs> um, curious whether they will have an actual explanation that fits the word because it's, at least in my experience, a bit of a loaded term. Um, but, um, and I guess maybe that depends on where the team who made this game is from. Um, but like, it's, 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 it's clear that the world is falling apart. Like it's clear that things are not right in the world. Um, and the people sort of seem to be doing relatively okay. Like in that they're still like getting by, but you can see the seams coming apart. You can see like the fabric of the universe beginning to unravel. Um, and so I can't say what these characters, these overseers would be like. Um, if they were well and healthy, which they very clearly are not. Be polite. You are more handy than the average fish. I like that that's, that's the swim's priority. Yeah, things do not sound so good in here. But I'm glowing! There's some water. Splooshy, splooshy, splashy, splash. Splooshy, splash. Okay. I have to find the edge of the wo world and potentially fall off of it before I can then go where I'm supposed to go. Oops. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm really not always good at determining what platforms I can platform on. Oh, I can just walk up the stairs. Right. As I learned at some point in the past and then clearly forgot, there's a diagonal part oh this musically sounds like something from Kentucky Route Zero it has that wrongness and weirdness I'm pretty sure these were normally chromatic and they're out of order now. Yeah, please, please let this be a blind um, play no no spoilers and no backseating because um, I, I would like to be able to figure out what to do by myself it's more fun uh. oh geez wow she's a whale I think she's a big cute fish oh holy crap what just happened um that doesn't look good did uh that's not the that um well um yeah yeah it's a good idea and a prefix I should I should make one thank you Audrey Redheart Okay, something's going on. 
We're going around connecting with them, with the overseers, and this one's going around killing them. And, oh! Oh, that's the goddess. The goddess chose a hero to destroy everything. Yeah, you're gonna undo the entire world. Oh dear. This is not good. Uh oh, that sounds like Rainbow Girlfriend. Have they been using me to get to the overseers so that they can kill them? Corruption. I don't. Mm. I mean, it's gonna destroy the world. Yeah, that's not good. Everything is tilting. This is not good. Yeah. Mm. Oh no. I thought this was going to be like a happy fuzzy game where you hug everybody and sing to them. They are really adorable. Oh. Uh -huh. I don't know that I like this hero very much. Oh, you're just a big old jerk. <laughs> That's the best line ever. How about you leave the shutting up to you? Oh my god, that's amazing. Rainbow Girlfriend didn't want that to happen. I mean, I guess the hero would have to be a jerk to be willing to destroy the world, even if it's the right thing to do. Uh-oh. Something's not good here. Oh, man. Miriam's not going to like this. Oh, the bard looks so sad. Haunted, really. Something went wrong. Nope. You have a strong heart. <laughs> Will I here forever? Oh no! I love Miriam's witchy nose. Oh no, some real talk. Oh, 
Miriam is going to have to be... Miriam is going to have to be sweet and give the bard a pep talk. <laughs> You're always all happy and singy. Oh. You're not useless. I mean, you are grumpy, but you're not useless. <sighs> this is really cute. Dart, Miriam is being adorable at you. Are we? What? Oh my god. We're gonna talk to- the Oh! Oh, the bard! Look at how sad the bard looks! Oh! I want, yes, yeah, no, you have to give me a pep talk. Oh, okay. I missed one. Okay. I'm not very good at following this kind of direction. Presumably other people. Have an easier time, but I do not. Oh man. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that I love about. Um. Oh, that's not good. Wait, am I playing as them? No way! Hold on, no! No, hold on! No, no! What? No, hold up! I don't have a dance button. I just wanna, well, I, okay, look, you can take away my dance button, but you can't make me not dance. You can play super epic music all you want to and give me a giant glowy sword and I'm still gonna dance like a dummy. I mean, some really good music. Oh my god, I'm on, I'm achieving, uh, I'm, I'm getting achievements for jumping so much. Oh my god. Achievement unlocked jump times Morty. Oh my god. Oh my god, jump times 50. Oh my god. This is amazing music. Okay, it would appear that 50 is all the jumps we can do, but I'm gonna try to do 100 anyway. Oh my god. So 
I was going to say, since we were talking about heroes who are really upbeat and then have a moment of darkness, I love Final Fantasy IX, and one of my favorite moments in that game is the, uh, the moment where the song You're Not Alone plays. I don't want to spoil that game in case you guys haven't played it. Jump times 100! I was right! Oh my god. I'm so satisfied. Periodically, something will indicate to me that I have found a game, a game developer team that gets me. Um, and sometimes when I saw that it went from 50 or 40 to uh, 50 jumps, I was like, I'm real to 100. I know this. And I did. Yeah, so, so Zidane is one of my favorite characters from any video game. I absolutely love him. Love him. Um, and he's, he wants to make people happy and he wants to believe in things working out okay in the end. And he's always giving pep talks to his friends um, and taking care of other people and generally being um, a, like, slightly dumb and flirtatious, like, ray of sunshine. Yes, you don't need a reason to help people. That's his catchphrase because um, they all have a line that is associated with them. Um, and then some things go badly in the story. And I would have loved it if the story was better in that part. But he has a breakdown and he just loses it. He just like loses all hope. Just is just like, there's no point in anything. Like, that's it. And his friends have to give him back some of the optimism and, 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 and hope that he had given them. Um, and it's just a beautiful moment. I won't tell you any more details than that. You have no idea what it is, but I love it. Anyway, I don't like this person and I don't want to play as them. But maybe... I... Do I have health? Holy crap, what? Bat Slayer, Lightning Sword, Lightning Power. Oh my god. You get like a bazillion achievements here for fighting things. Wow. Bat Eradicator. Nope. Stomping, stompy. Oh, did I take damage? Oh, I did. I don't know how I'm doing this, but... Okay, don't want to jump off the cliff. Oh, I took damage. Oh my god. You don't come talking to my rainbow girlfriend like that. Oh, no wonder she likes Bard. Ah, light bulb charge. Ah. Lightning power times 10, yeah. Reflection. Yeah. Spinny killer. Uh. Why was I talking about the Figaro twins being conjoined? You know, never mind. Lightning. Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. Ba -ba. 
Yeah, I recognize that. I want to wall jump now. <laughs> You're big. Achievement, the owl. Hi, Sal. This, this character also has like, this like obnoxious cocky facial expression, which don't, don't get me wrong, I like slightly smug, but good natured characters. Does this character have pronouns? She, her, okay. I, oh goodness. That didn't go so well for me. Goodness, how do I... Oh no, I'm taking damage. Spinny assassin, I'm gonna die. Look, cape wind is a thing, okay? I'm good at this. I'm good at video games. Ah. Uh. Okay. Well, that's cool. That didn't work. Oh, wait, no! Wait, no, hold on! No! That's my friend! Oh, no, 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 no! If I had told- if I had told this friend to go, would they not get killed? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I said go go back in there like instead of flying away. <sighs> Don't you dare. Oh, that's not good. Don't be a jerk. Oh, jeez. Ah. Uh, stop you, yeah. 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 This is really sad. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that the bird got away. Well, that one. Oh gosh, they were pretty scary. Oh, and, and Audrey can't understand them. Can't understand her.
didn't go so well. Fortunately, it seems that uh, she re retains her damage. Oops, that didn't go so well. Ultimate lightning sword. Yeah. Oh! oh okay. You don't have to charge it all the way. Ah! She's gonna win against me. I feel a little sick to my stomach after that. Jeez. <laughs> I'm supposed to trick you. You think you're saving the world and then it turns out that you've destroyed it. played games like that. I can't think of them offhand, but I know they exist and I know I've played them. What is your deal? I don't understand her, but okay. She wants to stop the corruption. But then the world's going to end. <laughs> that was a chapter. Okay, so Act 4 got interrupted, but Act 4 is going to happen now. The Happy Factory? That doesn't sound good. It is interesting to see the Rainbow Girlfriend be like, because it's like her job to cheer on the hero. She's not supposed to be doing any of this. Little buddy. Well, that's an interesting point, Moth, dude. That 
if we think about it, like, as the, like, we're getting tons of achievements for Audrey, that that's, like, the, like, like, yeah, raw, isn't it great to be the hero? Raw, isn't it great to kill things and unmake the universe and destroy everything and everyone? There's, there's an interesting disconnect, intentional disconnect there. Um, like, the music is all heroic, and you're getting the, like, I'm a hero achievement. You're playing a video game. You're killing bad guys, except you're also ending the world. Yeah, you lied to me. I guess it would be kind of depressing seeing people think that they could save again and again and again and failing. Is it just me? She, her hair used to do all of the colors. Now it's a much more limited palette. This is kind of making me think of uh, Mythic Ocean. You know, I figured that the rest of the screen had the limited palette, which I guess Bard is depressed. When you're depressed, things are not as vibrant or engaging or vivid as they might otherwise be. She's like, I got a crush on you. Please don't be sad. Oh my gosh. The bard is so adorable. Is she really cool? Is she? You think so? Are you trying to are you trying to make a little like OT3 happen here, Rainbow Girlfriend? I don't think. I don't think that your girlfriend and your bard friend are gonna hit it off. I just... I don't think so. Sorry. <sighs> oh no! Am I in Miriam's place? There's a clock. Yeah, I wonder if Rainbow Girlfriend is trying to maneuver it so this time it's different somehow. That's, I think, even quieter than the quiet voice before. Are we in the sad person home? Hello. You don't look sad. You're blue, but you don't look sad. Oh! Oh my gosh, it's their mom. Just, even their spin doesn't have the same spark. Mom. Yeah. No, no, to be fair, when I was really depressed and had a breakdown last year, I went to my mom's house and stayed there for a few months. Oh, that is so sad and cute. Mom. Her eyes when she was laughing are the same shape as the bard's mouth. Oh 
Oh my gosh, that that is pretty cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. Look. Oh. They make a they make a sound when they put the smile on their face. Oh, it's snowing. That seems appropriate. Everyone is blue. That's why this place was called Happy Something and it's blue, right? This is an earthbound reference, my friends. I mean, it's also possible that it's just you're depressed to everything is blue, but the combination, the juxtaposition of blue and happy. This is really... Quite a sensation. Mr. Baron. Factory of Smiles, the happy factory. No, excuse me, I take that back. Mother 3 has the happy boxes, I believe is what they're called. Hey, Neb. Happy, happy. Yeah. So this is a... Uh... Oh god, time is actually passing. I don't like that. Does it actually matter? Oh yeah, no, Mother 3 definitely. Like, cause again, the mermaids, like I said, the mermaids made me think of the Majipsies and uh... Hey! It's my mask friend. Hey now, Wanderer. Spend some time. Hmm. We're in the forest past the telescope. Sunrise is at 7 a.m. Ah, okay. Harvest moon. Oh man, Nab, congratulations. Which martial art do you study? Because it's snowing. I get it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I've got to, uh... That doesn't sound good. Oh, look. It's pokey. Okay, you can pet the dog in Wander Song. Somebody make sure that can you pet the dog Twitter account knows. Oh, Taekwondo! I actually studied Taekwondo when I was in uh, middle school. I wasn't very good, but. Doggy! You should get like slightly less sad after petting the dog. Let's go to Beth's. Hi. Oh, jeez. Gonna sit alone. One way or another, that's ominous. Hmm. 
That's definitely ominous and creepy. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. Hello! You're adorable! You look you look legitimately happy and you're making ridiculous puns and you're clearly the mail carrier and you've got envelopes on your hat. I like you. Let's be friends. Siobhan. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, Siobhan. Oh my god. No, Siobhan, no! Oh my god. She is really like, I mean, she's bright colors and smiling and it feels good to see her, you know? Like, everyone else is, like, sad and hurting, and the bard is sad and hurting. It's interesting if this is a factory town, a cold factory town, that the bard comes from here, of all places. Oh. Bard, if you were feeling like yourself, you would have a great time with that. Pub. Oh, okay, we're going around in circles. Got it. Oh, hello. I'm not... No! You are really creepy, Elmer gift house oh no what is this oh you're adorable you're adorable Woo. You're very convincing, Katya. Yeah, that's not creepy. So, oh, 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 there's a person. Oh, it's her. Hello, Siobhan. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. She's adorable. Look at her. She's just like having a good old time, just tromping along in her little male uniform. You think he looks like the happy mask salesman? I think because of his nose, he looks more like a cartoon from a certain era. But I can, I can see, actually, I can see the uh, Majora's mask. Oh no! It's a sad person whose problems I have to work on solving. Winston! Yes. No, you can pet her and then she's happy. Clock Tower Pub. That's cute. That's like saying like, yeah, yeah, we're doing that. Okay, I guess you are. That's legitimate. You're a little bit dramatic. All right, so where is my, um, where is my, do you have any customers in here? No. I need my troublemaker's notebook. What's it called? I want to visit you. Okay, I have to go through the house. The bomber's notebook. Thank you. I need a bomber's notebook.
All right, let's go into the pub. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Oh, oh no. I've heard that about wearing mascot costumes. That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> this one is snoozing. Capitalism! Working jobs that we hate, that are miserable, selling things to people that they don't need or want, and convincing them that they need or want it. Yeah. What's up, Katja? Huh. We're gonna have to do something about this. Oh, Juice. <laughs> oh my gosh. She must be a weird dude. That is... I would love to be able to sing to them and make them feel better. <sighs> oh no, Johan. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know that that's how it works. I don't know that the person who owns the factory has to be good at doing what the factory does. Hello, friend. Ah! What's up, Boris? Not so great. Hi, dog. I'm sorry, dog. I looked at you and I didn't pet you. That's unacceptable. What a cute dog. Who are you? What are you doing? Hello. No, 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 no. No, get back here. No, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Oh. Oh, the dog wants food. Okay, so I have to bring food. That's good to know. All right, we're gonna have to get some food for Winston. Oh, hello, she's adorable too. Good night, Deep Shock. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, I guess Boris is supposed to be Russian. Nightly sweeps. <laughs> oh man, astronomers. There's an astronomy lab in the 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 lab in Jor's mask. Give her a knowing nod when we pass. Oh my gosh. When she says, don't you know, you can just like picture that, the accent that would go with that. Oh, do I get to set them up? I would be happy to. 
Hello, you're lurking ominously. I mean, Vlad. Ah. Oh, jeez. That is... What's the name? Chis... Chismest. figure out what I'm gonna do for food hey I thought that they said oh no no not the pub I have to go to oh Christmas I know what that is where's the restaurant I want to go to the restaurant what are you doing hello it's like 2 a.m. What are you doing? Oh, there's Beth. Hold on. I want to go to Beth's. I have to meet the astronomer. I want to meet her. Also, there's a way down there. Hello. Oh, you're adorable. Lara, the astronomer. Stars. They're going out. Yep. That's right. The world is ending. Fucking whiz bats. Oh my god, that is delightful and adorable. Plotting. Subterfuge. Oh my god, we're gonna be friends. I can see you don't have much to say, so I'll keep talking. I should I should adopt that into my my uh, dialogue options. Accomplice. Hmm. Oh my god, that's amazing. I imagine what she says differs depending on when you say you'll do it versus all of those other options. That's cute. <laughs> Awake during the day but unemployed. Oh, I know what he wants. I'm gonna do it next time. Man, it's depressing here. I mean, it's like four in the morning in like a cold capitalism is evil town. So like, I wanna talk to you monkey friend, but I guess I don't get to. Where is mom's house? Oh my god. No. Where's mom's house? So I got my mom's birthday is next Wednesday. And I bought my mom the best birthday present. Because I asked her, I was telling her I wanted to get her a really good present. And she said, I want to figure out how to get up there. She said what she wanted was a hug, but obviously that's not an option. 
So then I got to thinking, like, what if... What if... I guess I guess I don't have to go back to bed, do I? I can just be up all night. Um, it's like, what if I sent my mom something or had something sent to her that would be like a hug or something that she could hug? Anyway, I wound up. It turns out that there is a stuffed cat that is 27 inches long that I'm sending to my mom. Slightly irresponsible decision. But I've been working really hard um, this past month to do a lot of work so I could send my mom a slightly expensive 27 inch um, stuffed cat. Um, I got it from a shop called Stuffed Safari, I think. And it's a calico cat. It's giant. Anyway. My mom is going to open it up and it's going to be like this big. <laughs> I've seen a photo of it. It's like the size of a small child, like a two year old. Or maybe younger than that. I don't know. But anyway, it's like this big. <laughs> She's going to like take it out and have this giant cat. I'm going to be like, you should hug this whenever you want to hug me. Yeah, I'm so excited. Hi, Miriam. Ah! Oh no, do, did I do it wrong? Do I not get to do any of the things with the rest of the chapter? Okay, is it overseer? Oh, it must be the Baron. Does she, does she not complain if you go straight there to see her? Is the dialogue different? Oh my god, that's amazing! I love it when games do that! Okay, she complains less. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's still Miriam. She's still gonna complain. Oh! Total <laughs> plot twist! What does that mean about my mom? to sing it. But I can't sing because I don't have my voice. This is not, I mean, it's not supposed to be very musically satisfying. Oh, jeez. Was it just me or did the notes stop coming out after a while? like oh my god I cannot deal with this not working and you having a crisis uh. yes. <laughs> oh man oh I'm so excited that's a lot of flagging for her to respond to like that it knows that I agreed to take down the factory otherwise she would probably be like we need to find a way to take down the factory and then maybe when I would go to talk to the astronomer maybe I'd have different dialogue options I love this you really only get this attention to detail in passion project games I feel oh you can come with me Miriam yeah it kind of sucks Oh, look at me sadly pirouetting. I hope people have cosplayed as the bard. 
Oh, you can go more right? Oh, that's right. You can't even tell that it's daytime. It's so dark and smoggy. Although I guess it's winter, so the sun goes down early, too. Oh, Miriam's not here. Did she go to my house? She should meet my mom. They should be friends. Oh, that's adorable, Trellis. I'm glad to hear it. This must be the observatory, which I can't do anything with right now, at least. I'm just going to go traipsing into the scary sunset forest. So I want to be here when the sun comes up. What? I know it's p.m., not a.m. So it's actually sundown. No, it's cool. It's hard to tell, honestly. Boy, it's ominous. Like, is it just me or did it get more ominous here? Oh, right. I know where to get the food for the doggy. Hi, Miriam. She's going to go to my mom's house. I just had to find my way around town. So here's the pub. Oh, was it 8.30 or 9.30? 9.30, okay. How? Oh, I'm not going to get there in time. Yeah, but there's no way I'm going to make it in time. I'm going to try to learn my way around. Bench is going to adjust time forward. Oh, so I could do like... That's not what I meant to do. Hold on. I want to... Uh... Okay, so there's no punishment for doing this, right? Okay, so I want 9.30. I'm going to get the food here. Uh, where did I get the parouette? got an hour to find the right place. Can I do it? Yes. Here he comes. Oh, he said please! Oh my god, this is adorable! Oh my goodness, look at his happy face! I made a sound and Sophie got confused and woke up. Oh, oh my god, it's so, such an adorable moment! Look at him, he's just like... <laughs> oh my god, that's adorable. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Mission accomplished. Hi, Vlad. Vlad, that is a very strange dance. Hey, Winston. Winston and the dog. <gasps> I see. Okay, I have a friend named Tara. Or her friend, a friend whose dog is named Tara. Yes, Tara. Oh my god. Tell Brenneman that I put his dog in the game. That makes two. <laughs> hmm. Also, I love Final Fantasy VI. So. Okay, now I have to figure out who else is bored and despondent. <laughs> the dog is technically unemployed. All right. There's got to be a way to get to the outskirts. Winston and Winnie! Oh, that's cute. Yeah, there's a guy on the roof. My favorite character in Final Fantasy VI. Oh, man, anyway. Um, I actually am about to... It's my favorite game, but I've been streaming it on Tuesday, so I'm about to finish it next Tuesday. Um, I have a lot of feelings about that game. My favorite character is Locke. My second favorite character is Sully's. I'm very much enthusiastic about both of them. Yes, and I am writing fanfic about that is a retelling of Final Fantasy VI, but made to make more sense, centered around those two characters and their perspective. Here, right? This is the general vicinity, right? I'm going to the observatory, but I want to I wanna be here. I guess the sun will come out. Do you think so, Stolen Light? Note on the door, Ganja Diner, yeah. Oh, thank you, Chrono. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on the next chapter. I was supposed to have one done this week, but I did not because it's been a really busy few weeks for me. And I worked super hard to get chapter last week, but... Okay, that's true, Stolen Light, but I'm going to cry a lot. Okay, what did they tell me about where I have to stand here? Here. Okay. Am I going to get a new dance? Am I going to get the smile slightly more dance? Yes! <gasps> Hi, friend! Oh my god. They're going to do the dance. I love their dance. It's so cute. Yes. I love Sully's. Well, it's interesting because, like, Locke was always my favorite, um, and I love Sully's very much, and I always have. But playing through it this time around, I've come to, like, a, a new appreciation of her. So, yeah. It, the, the story is exclusively from her point of view and Locke's point of view, but it's a lot of her um, so far. So, time to dance. Let's let the dance in. Come on. I just, I love how enthusiastic just the arms. This is a good dance. I like this dance. That's good. Although it kind of looks like I'm waving bugs away from my face, but yes, exactly, Angry Nerd Bird. Okay, how do I... There we go. I mean, this one is good too. This one's probably my second favorite, but this is my favorite. Sophie, 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 Sophie. Oh, she's such a cute kitten. Sophie is a good baby. She's all snoozums. She's sleeping on the Sophie spot. Do you guys want to see Sophie? Yes, it goes. I love it. All right. It's kitty time. Oh, she just stretched.
No, hold on. There she is. This is my cat, Sophie. She's a precious baby. Also, yes, there's my DDR pad. So, so, who's a meow? She's got her little kitty paw sticking down there. Baby. She's so cute, even if she did scratch me pretty badly at the beginning of the stream. I adopted her a couple of days before lockdown started. So she's still relatively new in my life, but she's pretty great. Oh, you can see the creepiness of the factory there in the background. How do I get up to that person? Let's figure this out. Cats are pretty great. My old cat was a black cat. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. What is happening? Who are you? What are you doing? What? Who? You're kind of creepy looking. Oh, you're the one who sleeps in the pub. Ah, you just sleep in the pub. And you're the one who... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on now. All right. Hmm. Let's go say hi to mom. See what she has to say about my friend. Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh my god, she's so cute. I love the thought of her as like an activist when she was younger. I love that she calls them muffin. That's adorable. Gosh. Hi, Miriam. Is that guy in the roof? Yeah. <laughs> he seems depressed. A musical and mopey. That's the question. But how do you get up there? <laughs> oh, good, Chrono. I'm glad that he approves. Okay, I've already talked to this crowd. How do I get up onto the roof? Oh man, Winston and Tara are on the case. There's a new dialogue. Oh, there is. Oh. She is Brenneman. I don't want to, like, I don't want to, uh, spoil anything for you. But I, I did, I did have the option to name a dog, and Tara was an option. We're basically dealing with a combination of the like 
blue, blue, happy, happy, and happy TV. Um, Earthbound, Mother 3, anti-capitalism, double whammy. So, it's good times. Weird dude. You could overthrow the over the factory. My muscles deny you. I don't think that's how it works, Johan, but that's okay. Yeah, these two say no. Boris. Yeah, yeah, no, like it's it's fun. This is it's doing a good job of like wearing its um inspiration. Like it's like letting you know that it knows that you know what its inspiration is. But then it's very much doing its own thing too. It's good. If anyone doesn't follow my friend Brennamania already, he has an excellent dog, two excellent cats, and is just generally a delightful human being in all ways. So you should follow him <laughs> because he's awesome. Haha. -ha. Oh no. All right, so this is a whole bunch of people not. Oh yes, it has it has certain influences. It has multiple influences in common with Undertale, shall we say? I want to talk to the lamp pole lighter, and I can't. See, here's Tara. Look at this. Look, Tara is a good dog. See, see what a good dog. She's a great dog. Hmm. It's a very charming game overall. It uh it goes places too, which I like. All right. We're going to jump on some more roofs. And see. I'm on top of the factory. Did we do it? We did it. Well, now we just wait for them to for him to come, right? This is the right house, right? Isn't this the right one? Yes, it is a game that I was I was dancing around a lot. I usually do, but the bard is too sad. I can't make them dance right now because they're they're just it's just it's too sad watching them be sad while they dance. Oh, look at that! Hello! Hey! <laughs> I wonder what talking to them would have been like if I didn't know that I wanted to overflow, over, overflow the factory. Maybe that's how we're going to overthrow the factory. Hmm. Hmm. Bye, Renomania! We will see you later. Give those fuzzy fuzzes some snuggles. A city, its heart replaced with machinery. Cold is the snow that falls upon it. And for love, unrequited. What is, is the bard holding something? Oh, did he just give me an envelope? Yes, okay. Yes! Peter, go look for the factory. Oh my god. Follow like, oh, it is a follow like a. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I will check the door. I saw that. Ah, okay, that's that's nice. No, I appreciate that. See, giving somebody a letter is fine. Like saying like, hey, you seem cool and I'm interested in you. Like, that's fine. I have nothing against that. So it's 11.30 in front of the factory. I have to give myself some time. Because I will get lost. Yeah, no, the, the, the feeling of this place is very different and the music is very different. Oh no, I don't want to go to the outskirts. Good night, Nick. There's the factory. Siobhan is adorable. I like her. Winston and his friend. All right, so eventually, theoretically, I'll find the factory. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, is it Miriam? Oh no. That's amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> She's blushing. <laughs> oh my god, Miriam. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, the letter has a skull on it because it's her. Alright. This is extremely satisfying. All right, buddy. Oh my god, the sigh. It's very Zelda like to have like the like one sound that they make. Oh no! Is his heart crushed? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh look at that. That's an actual smile on the bard's face. They're actually happy. I liked how Winston's, Winston was very dramatic about like, you mean the super evil factory that's destroying everything? Yes. Whereas this guy's just like, yes. I will be there. Fierce, yeah, that's a good word for her. And grumpy, yep, yep. That's adorable. Oh my God. Oh, 
Oh, he won't say anymore. It is actually, it is that time for me. It is just about 10 o'clock, which means that I should shut down. Thank you all so much for joining me and for our new friends who came by. I play this every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern until 10 p.m. Eastern, which is why we're hitting pumpkin time right now. Um, I, like I said, I'm potentially beating Final Fantasy VI on Tuesdays. I may do tarot readings on Saturday. We'll see how I feel. Um, but yeah, feel free to join us on the Discord if, if you want. We have a very friendly group of folks there. Um, thank you so much. This has been fun. And thank you for your patience in dealing with me as I went off on yet another, like, 20 minute tangent. That's how it goes. Um, thank you. Yay. Good night, everybody. Take care of yourselves. If you have a pet, give them a snuggle. If you have a friend and you can give them a hug, give them a hug. If not, just stay safe. Be good to yourselves. And I will see you folks soonish. Bye.